appreciate the opportunity. I work with NOAA, I work for NOAA, but I am located at Comet, so I'm kind of extended family. So this seemed like a nice opportunity. I'm a hydrologist. I want to talk about better ways of looking at data that are on time. Go ahead and read this uh, quote from a Nobel laureate. So I want everyone here to be a Nobel laureate for five minutes. I want you to look, think differently, and discover. I'm excited. Let's talk about this. When it comes to time series displays, and we've already seen some, they're confusing. They kind of stink here. I think we can do a lot better. So one of the ones that's the worst that I think is the spaghetti plot. I hate spaghetti plots. But in that lies the solution. Because here the assumption is lines overlay within a single plane. If we alter our perception and look at it differently, it opens up a new opportunity. In this case, don't think of them as lines. Think of them as stacked profiles. By doing so, we have a hidden axis that reveals itself that we can use. So we look at that. We'll take this. Let's turn it into a, a wire diagram. And you can see that that hidden axis is the year. So the spaghetti plot sees this mountain range at ground level. Let's look at the mountain range from the sky. And that's what we're going to do for these next few slides here. So we have a dual time scale. We have the year, water year for hydrologists started in October, and the day of the water year. And that's our reference. We can overlay data onto that, and it opens up some possibilities. So I'm going to show you this on probably the most important location of a river in the western United States, Lee's Ferry, on the Colorado River. And there's a lot of data there, but there's a lot of big blue blob there that has information that you just can't see with this. Let's take that same data and remap it into this raster hydrograph. You got the day on the X, you got the Y is the year, and that circle there shows you when they close the diversion tunnels for the Glen Canyon Dam, and you can see differences before the dam and after the dam. So there's a lot of other patterns that you can see in there. There's the blue for the snowmelt on the Rockies. Now we can see the beginning and the end and the duration, and we can start to compare in between different years for this. Well, there's other things in here too. There's areas where there isn't snowmelt. In this case, it's going to show you where the droughts are. And in fact, that one in the 30s wraps around into the next year. So we're seeing daily, we're seeing annual, interannual, seasonal, monthly patterns here. And if we look at a particular event for a storm, like this one right here, we see even though the storm was only a few days, the effects can last for months. How do we know that? Because we can easily compare for the years after and the years before, and we can see an enhanced flow on that point. If we look after the dam is in place, we see the 1983-84 El Nino, when we almost lost Glen Canyon Dam. And the river was running at record levels through the entire year. It was years at flood level. The other things you can see here are these artificial floods that occur every so often. And without any statistics, here's an artificial fake flood. And you can compare it to a real flood. Not even the same. But it makes it very easy to do comparisons without a lot of statistics. And then finally, because of the way they operate the dam there at Glen Canyon, you get these very abrupt changes at the first of the month, a very step type of a function, as opposed to the natural system, where it gradually rises and then it decreases. Well, one of the people or one of the groups that is using this technique is the US Geological Survey. You can pull this up on their WaterWatch website. You can see this for any of the gauges that they have available on their website. Go to the toolkit, go to the bottom raster hydrograph. I'm very pleased that they're doing this now. But you don't have to look at water. You can look at fish. Here is salmon swimming up the Columbia past Bonneville Dam. You can look at five years of data with a spaghetti graph, or you can look at 76 years of daily data with a raster graph. You can see all these patterns going on there. There's three different times the salmon go. You got the spring, the summer, and the fall runs. And you can see some changes on that very easily. But the coolest application I've come up with is this last one. You look at red tide blooms in Puget Sound. We have all these different time series environmental data sets. They're all time maps. We stack them just like a GIS. We do some grid math. We can summarize the favorable windows for blooms. Nice way to take a lot of data and summarize it. So in conclusion, a change in perspective gives you a new way to view data. New views of data unlocks information. New information means discoveries. So thank you.